Hello and welcome back to the 2MS podcast. My name is Amelia. I'm joined today by Elliot and Sarv. And before we get started, I'm going to pass it over to Elliot for a land acknowledgement. Thanks, Amelia. Uh, yeah, we'd like to acknowledge that we're recording this episode from UBC's Vancouver Point Grey campus, which is situated on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of the Hunkamenum speaking Musqueam people. We also recognize that you may be tuning in from many places near and far, and we acknowledge the traditional owners and caretakers of those lands. Back to you, Amelia. Yeah, so today we are talking about mental health in COVID-19, because uh, UBC has gone online again recently, a lot of back and forth. So we're going to be talking about, you know, living alone, having to self-isolate, how to kind of find your groove with online classes again, as well as some, uh, some resources that UBC has. Uh, starting off with talking about living alone specifically. So I can talk a little bit about that. Um, We were just chatting and I mentioned I'm actually, I don't entirely live alone. I'm a part-time living alone student. My roommate and I are both from the area. So she goes home for a week and it can be a little bit tough because it gets lonely. I think it's interesting, like no one talks about this, but one of the biggest things is like I get jump scares because if I hear a noise go by (laughs) and you're alone, you're like, who else could be making that noise? But other times it's just, you want that comfort of knowing there's someone else in the house. Like it's just a comforting feeling because it's difficult to move from like your parents' home when you're 18 into like a space where you're all by yourself. And it can be pretty isolating just not having anyone to talk to or there there could be like days where you don't see, you just don't see a person all day. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think this past summer I lived in a studio um, which wasn't as bad, even though it was a smaller space, just because, you know, I could see friends outside all the time. Um, and now that I live, I live alone still in like a one bedroom apartment. Um, I just don't really see as many people, especially with the Omicron variant of COVID uh, going around. I definitely will go days on end where I'm like, oh, I haven't seen people in person in a long time. And that just is so weird to me that like I'm going that long of a period without any interaction. <sighs> what about you, yeah. Amelia? <laughs> totally. <laughs> um, yeah, I have a roommate. So at least I, I do see people most days, I, but I have gone those like one or two days in a row. It's like, wow, I haven't interacted with them, which is kind of <laughs> weird. Um, but yeah, I definitely try to space it out by not spending all day at home. Uh, or at least when it comes to schoolwork, like separating that I'm in my room when I'm chilling and I'm by myself. But if I'm doing work, I like to move to another space. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I go to the library, I go to a coffee shop to log into my virtual classes, because at least I don't know the people around me, but at least there's people around me. Um, or at least going on a walk, but also going to campus, which is nice now that I know last year there were a lot of things on campus that weren't open. Like it seemed pretty empty when I'd come to visit, mm-hmm. but now it still seems pretty full. I know residences are still open. Uh, so it's still nice to go to campus and get that kind of semblance of a of the experience. Yeah. I, I actually lived on campus when it was completely closed. Oh, Sarb, were you in really? Orchard? I was in Orchard and it was, it was just, I will not lie, it was horrible. Oh my <laughs> like, goodness. September was like a shock to all of us because right. I guess since Elliot, you and, and Amelia, both of you like spent like part, like most of your first year, you guys were on campus where it was like mm-hmm. regular life without COVID. Mm-hmm. So I had only seen it in COVID and it was completely deserted there was like two things open and Mm -hmm. it just, it kind of felt like a ghost town. And so when everyone came back in September, it was like such a shock. We're like, there's so many people here. I was like, everywhere is busy. (laughs) Right. And all the buildings were open. Yeah. I was also, um, I was like, I was an RA in Orchard last year and I had only started halfway through the year, but going to campus after what I saw in my first year and second year and seeing how there were so few people was so such like a switch for me and then like going back to sort of what my my normal was in September and then seeing so many people on campus I can't imagine how different that would be for you Sarv um so it was so (laughs) tricky I was like why like looking at main mall and seeing like herds of students walk by we're like my friends because all like ever all the friends that I made were through residents we're all like looking around we're like what is this like we feel like we're gonna get trampled anytime soon because <laughs> you would, there was like I'd say roughly like maybe a thousand people there yeah 
what do you do, I guess, to keep yourself on track at home now, uh, Sarv? Um, I actually use, I, I use lists and Google calendar. Google calendar is like my best friend. Um, I have tried using a planner. It just doesn't work for me. I know it works for some people. And I feel like kind of like the norm is like everyone uses a planner, but I was like, I don't, <laughs> I just, I don't like using it. Cause then you can't like my defense is you can't like, you have to like erase stuff to like move it to another page. And now mm-hmm. with like COVID and everything like that, since everything's super flexible, like zoom meetings gets rescheduled all the time, right? Classes yeah. get canceled, things yeah. get moved in person to online. So it's easier for me to just make a list on my laptop of like my daily things I need to do and then add all my important events onto my Google calendar so I can see like what's happening when, and then I can change where like any second, like I can add in a Zoom link or I can take the link out like whenever. Um, But for like relaxing and recharging, I I don't entirely like putting that on my calendar because then it feels like it's a chore. Whereas I feel like it should be something that you can naturally just integrate into your day. Um, Just like taking some time to honestly like get away from screen time because we have so much screen time now. It's kind Mm -hmm. of inevitable. Do you guys have anything like, do any of you guys use a planner? I do. I have a bullet journal. I'm the that person. Oh, uh, you are that person. You make the yeah. monthly little calendar. Uh, absolutely. Like, oh. Keeps me sane. I actually, that's something that I do during my Zoom meetings. I'm like, oh, I'm just going to like make a little month <laughs> page on here. But it's like, it's nice because for me, like the designing of it and building it myself is like a relaxing mm. part. Yeah. Like, it's like, cause I'm not an artist. I'm not very good at drawing anything. So that's my time to like, okay, I can build this and make it look the way I want and like make little doodles on the side and then also use it as an organization tool. So it works for me, but everyone I talk to is like, that does not work for me. <laughs> that's yeah. It does not work. I want to like throw my bullet turn away. I was like, <laughs> the line like goes a little bit off and I can't fix it. And then I go oh, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Elliot? Fun. I mean, I got to say, I using my, I use a Google calendar as well. And I use that thing religiously. Like I put every thing in it, um, every task, every class, every meeting, every social hangout, (laughs) even if it's not planned after the fact, I will go back to my calendar and put it in (laughs) Um, or if things got canceled, like I'll remove it. And I don't know, I was talking to a couple of friends about this and I think I do this at least to give myself some sense of control. We're getting, mm. we're getting, you know, deep here because I don't know. I feel like COVID-19 has taken away so much control from me and, yeah. and all of us that it's like nice to have that little bit of control over my life, yeah. at least with my calendar. Um, and it's nice. No. It like kind of gives me that sense of security knowing that, hey, like there's a plan for my day and my week. I'm not going to just try and wiggle through and play it by ear, which works for some people doesn't work for me um yeah yeah for me like I guess my sort of ways of coping with isolation especially living alone I like to chat with um some friends a lot on discord I noticed that I don't do it with all my friends per se like I have friends that live on campus here as well but I don't tend to do it with those friends I tend to do it with my friends back from my hometown just because that's sort of how our dynamic has worked for so Mm -hmm. long and Mm -hmm. so I feel like it's more natural just to go about that way yeah totally I mean that's it's nice that we have like things like that available you know like online there are obviously some cons to it because like you don't get that face-to-face contact but you can still find like alternative ways to connect with your friends like no one would think to use zoom right like when everyone goes back home because in a normal year like everyone goes home in May anyways right and so you Mm -hmm. can't really get like all seven to ten of your friends together yeah I mean I noticed also, where did Zoom come from? Because I feel like it sort of popped out <laughs> no of nowhere idea. at the start of COVID. I was I'd using Skype of... for Yeah, I was going to say Skype. Oh, yeah. Up until like 2019. And I was uh-huh. like, why was I doing that? Facebook right? Messenger yeah. video call. That's platform calls. we were using. <laughs> Skype feels so old that like, I feel like I can like, hear the noise of like when it's calling people mm-hmm. in the back of my head. Um. Well, I guess, okay. So like with, you know, cases are obviously going up. Um our final exams last semester were pushed Half online. online yeah. Yeah. This semester has been put online where, you know, not sure, I guess, where things are going in terms of that, but so many people are, are now testing positive for COVID. A good proportion, like a good portion of our student population is now having to self-isolate. Um, yeah. And there, you know, there's a lot of challenges that come along with that. 
Yeah, I had to in in end of December. I was supposed to go to Victoria for an event that got canceled. Uh, so I was hanging out at home. Overall, a very nice time that I didn't miss work. I didn't miss school. Finals were done. I, my Christmas plans didn't get uh, inhibited because it was right after that. Uh, but it was definitely an interesting time of like, I can't leave my house. Yeah. <laughs> and I was lucky not to be alone. Uh, my partner and I were isolating together. Um, but it was like, there was no food in my house and I couldn't go out and get anything. So it was like, oh, yeah. I have to order groceries now. And then you go on to, to Uber Eats. And it's like, hey, the next available day is like three days from now. Oh okay this is fine and it's expensive yeah um so that was my I was pretty lucky in in the overall scheme of things but that was probably the biggest challenge for me and that part was just like the expense and the time of like getting things delivered um the experience itself I'll be honest I just slept for most of it it was like the whirlwind of like classes to finals to then flying home for Christmas and then flying back here and event plans getting canceled that I was just exhausted. And it was the first time I had to like breathe. So I slept it off for like six days straight. Um, and that was my experience. But I don't know about you, sorry. Um, yeah. So I actually also just had COVID, which is funny because Elliot just said this is so transmissible and like two out of three of us had COVID. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I guess, Elliot, you're the minority, right? And honestly, people are. Like, when I talk to them, like, have you had COVID? Like, most people have. Because oh yeah, I I actually got it right when online classes started, um, mm. which was, it kind of sucked, but it was syllabus week at the same time. So I mm. wasn't, like, too worried about it. The part that was frustrating for me was being ill. Like, I got actually sick. I woke up with a fever, and oh, I was, gosh. like, physically not very happy. And it was so surreal, right? Because we've been hearing about COVID since, like, March 2020. Yeah. And I was like, so you're telling me this little virus has traveled all over the world. It's broken down in variants, and now it's inside of me? <laughs> like, I was sitting there, I was like, what the hell, right? I was like, oh, my God, like, I have COVID. And mm -hmm. it wasn't like a... I think one of the challenges I actually had was I, my parents live uh, nearby. So like I could get groceries, but my issue was with the testing. Um, Cause mm. BC is like running out of tests right now mm -hmm. right? Like, right. to get, a, I couldn't get a PCR test. So mm. I don't have like a certified positive on my record per se. Right. I only yeah. took a rapid test and I had symptoms and it just felt so like ominous and like, so unsure. Cause I was like, do I have COVID? Is it a mm -hmm. false positive? Am I mm. tripping? But I did isolate anyways. And it was just such a surreal feeling. Like I, I remember opening my door and I was like, does the outside world like even exist? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. I was like, is there, and I isolated alone. Mm. So right as I got out of isolation, I ran back home. I was like, I need to like live in a space with people for a, mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah. It was just, it, it was weird. I don't recommend it. I, I absolutely <laughs> despise it. If anyone's thinking about it. Yeah, I'm, you know, I got Zero it. out of 10 recommend. Like, if you're considering it, I would just say don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I gotta say, like, e even out of, so even, yeah, even though I'm out of the three of us, the one who hasn't had COVID yet, <laughs> um, right when I, so I had gone home, my family members were telling me like, oh, you know, someone in the house tested positive. And I was like, mm. ah, like I got out of there just in time. But um, now I feel like it's definitely way more of a background thought in my head yeah. all the time, like making mm. sure that I'm cognizant of being as safe as possible, keep myself, do what I can. But also like, I think it's important to say that as long as you're doing what you can, like you can't put any more blame on yourself mm -hmm. it is yeah um, you can't really like control it like I mean Amelia like did you feel like you need it like you know your, your health was like any worse than it would be like in a regular flu yeah it was I didn't have too many symptoms I was definitely because my my partner was symptomatic so she was like oh we should get rapid tested uh, yeah. and we did and then we both came up I had like a headache and I was yeah. just so honestly could have just been me. I was exhausted. I was very fatigued. But I was like, I don't know if this is just me or just COVID. <laughs> no, I had it too. I had it like fatigue as well. Yeah. But that was my, yeah, that I was really lucky that neither of us got super sick, um, mm -hmm. that we came out of it uh, pretty okay. And I was also very lucky that my roommate wasn't home, like a home in our, our hometown for, for Christmas. So I was like, okay, disinfect the entire house before she got <laughs> I home. did that too. Lice all every surface. Um, yeah, so I was just very, very grateful that I didn't get anyone else sick or like hadn't, you know, yeah. gone anywhere before. I also did it during online school. So I actually, I did end up messaging my professors. I was like, 
hi like I have COVID I have so much brain fog I had brain fog to be honest mm. I was like completely out of it and I was like yeah and it just felt so weird I was like oh I have COVID and I was like I <laughs> actually have COVID and they were honestly really nice about it they were just like yeah, yeah. like it's completely okay because it affects everyone differently yeah. um I got lucky with syllabus week I'm so grateful that it wasn't like you know midterms or finals because that's mm. like it's really difficult I noticed like the because in high school, no one cares if you miss the test. You can just move it like a couple of days. We're in university. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's that extra stress on you. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know, like, like having to take a final next term. Oh or, like defer or, it. Exactly. Like take a final next. And it's something that's not in like anyone's control. So exactly. I was really grateful that it happened when it did. I think it was a good period. I mean, I think now that classes are going back online um, or now that classes have been online, potentially <laughs> going back in person. No. There is a lot of uncertainty with, are we going to go back in person? Mm-hmm. How am I supposed to stay focused? Am I going to have to take my midterms, my finals online in person? Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously Zoom fatigue is making its comeback. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I got to say, for me, like what's worked, I guess, over the past couple of weeks has been trying to kind of block out my time between like okay I've got a lecture I'm gonna like watch this and then I'm gonna take a little bit of like rest time like taking a lot of social breaks throughout my day to keep myself as charged as possible for me my mental health is definitely going on the decline while (laughs) we stay online Um, I'm just missing a lot of those things you get in person like those little side conversations you have with people sort of like Mm -hmm. the mini friendships that you build and um, not to mention the online environment is really tough on our professors, especially because like personally, I don't keep my camera on during most classes. Most classes I've rolled out of bed five minutes before I'm wearing my pajamas (laughs) and my hair is like a hurricane. And so (laughs) my, my camera is off, (laughs) but I don't know about you two. And I know the same. Okay, yeah. (laughs) And most professors will like ask out questions and then it's like radio silence. How have y'all both been finding online classes and coping with um, the different stressors of that? I have two. So I have one class that I don't go to because it's 8 a.m. in the morning. I was (laughs) like, I will watch this. So I like that part of like Zoom University because, you know, it's like recorded and I can just watch everything later. And then I have another class where I do turn the camera on. Um, I keep my camera on because I just, I honestly feel really bad. And I was like, to like put some ease on the professor or like, I'll like turn my mic on to talk. It's granted, it is a smaller class. You will not catch me doing that in like a three, mm-hmm. 200 person lecture. It's like a 26 people class. <laughs> like Right, right. In a smaller classroom, we'll do it. In a big one, no. Because everything's recorded. There are people watching that stuff afterwards, right? And I'm sure we've all had like our fair share of seeing embarrassing moments over <laughs> Zoom or recordings. Oh, yeah right and you don't want to be that person yeah I feel the same way I'm in I'm in English so a lot of my classes are like 18 to 35 people I would say on average Mm -hmm. Uh, so in those ones I'm a little bit more comfortable and it's a lot discussion based as well Um, like tutorials and things like that but then like large lectures not as fun (laughs) yeah and I think it's with those online lectures part of it is obviously we want to make sure that our profs still are getting that engagement from students. Some students also don't have like good internet connections Mm -hmm. or which is, you know, something I don't want students to be vilified for is like my internet is horrible and I can't turn on my camera. Um, Otherwise my bandwidth is going to go crazy down or, you know, when lectures are recorded, like, if your camera's on, then like your video is going to be on that recording for everyone mm-hmm. to see. Like, yeah, I think it's a totally fair thing to say that if you don't want to keep your camera on because of that reason, like you shouldn't yeah. have to. Um, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. I think only Amelia, you said you were doing your MM, right? Uh, do you guys have to turn your cameras on? Because I know certain faculties are like you have to keep your camera on. Yeah. So for the the bachelor plus master's management, they like for participation points essentially like your account is absent without it which Mm -hmm. some students like and some students don't but like I understand the the student engagement side of it but there's also 
yeah like you said there's a lot of factors that go into you know your own participation there's other ways that you can just participate I do like that about a lot of online online classes now is that you know there's discussion boards there's asking questions in the lectures there's you know doing other ways and like participation is not just being at the lecture and using an eye clicker um yeah a kind of outdated idea oh of God. like you are participating <laughs> throwback yeah. I think it's <laughs> also made like meetings easier like I was like oh like sure. I don't have to drive all the way to school for this like we can just do it over zoom and make it like mm-hmm. a 10 minute chai yeah. you have to, like awkwardly sit there do an icebreaker talk uh-huh. to each other yeah and I, I was like yeah. this has made my life like a little bit easier because it saves on commute like I work remotely and it's been the best thing ever because then I don't have to take in account like 30 minutes to an hour of commuting back and forth mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And with that potential return back to in-person, there's a lot of like, you know, there's a lot of comfort levels that people have to take into consideration. Yeah. There's scheduling, there's, yeah, just being cognizant of like, everyone has a different situation of how Mm -hmm. far they live from campus, how comfortable they are being in a 200 person lecture, what people's schedules are. There's, there's lots to take into consideration when we do eventually get that return back, which we don't know when it's going to be. Yeah. I mean, I know that some folks that I've spoken with have definitely expressed like my comfort levels have changed a lot and Mm -hmm. um even if they were different last year or last month like with the Omicron variant in play now people are like oh I feel much more hyper aware of my health all the time yeah um or you know some people have are way more cautious with their comfort levels some people are a little bit more relaxed and I think whenever I am interacting with someone I'll try and kind of gauge that based on like how our interaction goes but also you know if you can't get a good read on someone you can definitely always just ask I don't I think that um there's no harm in asking how someone would like to interact with you with uh yeah. with their COVID oh level. yeah yeah absolutely Cause I think like that's, there's no harm in always asking. Mm-hmm. Right. And I feel like you're right though. Like the com- your comfort level, how you mentioned that it changes like last month because it's such a dynamic situation. I think a lot of the anxiety that's revolving around COVID is the uncertainty. Cause like as humans, we have like a natural tendency to want to control things. And now this <laughs> is a huge, huge issue that is completely out of everyone's control. I think that's where a lot of the anxiety comes from. Some things that I feel like I personally have just been working on is kind of just accepting, like, you know, I'm like, okay, in my head like what would be create like that hope of like going in person like I'm kind of like starting to like diminish that and be like okay I have to accept that zoom university might be my new normal you know and how am I how is my routine going to change because if you have a lot of conversations like I've caught myself saying like before COVID I did this this and this before COVID I did this this and this and now I have to create like new morning routines right new daily routines in the midst of COVID to kind of like almost like I guess survive and as dramatic as that sounds it is a completely different, like it's taken a toll on everyone because you went from your, our world shifted so abruptly. And I feel yeah. like it's difficult with change, especially as university students, we go through so much change. I feel like, like oh, nobody yeah. really talks about it, right? Like as someone who came out of high school, no one told me like the amount of change you go through, you move every four to eight months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You uh, like a lot of people move cities, people, you just move back and forth and there's uh, so much instability. Definitely. Totally. I think that like, like, as you said, oh, before COVID I do this and now I do this. And it's like, you're always setting a new normal for yourself mm-hmm. and trying to adapt and adjust. Um, I mean, for me, like one of the ways that I've been coping with that sort of new normal is I keep pushing my graduation because <laughs> I'm every year that goes by is just like, oh, that's like another that's like a nut, I've increased the proportion of COVID years compared to nor- like COVID yeah, three years yeah. of my degree. What's another year? You know, what if I did yeah. co-op? What if I added a second major? <laughs> I want a good COVID non-COVID ratio. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it definitely makes it hard to plan for the future as well. Like you said, you know, looking to graduate, then it's like, what do you do after? We don't know what the world's going to look like in, you know, in May or in September or in next January. So it definitely yeah. makes it hard to to do future planning or like look into the future when you don't know what things are going to look like next week or things have looked different a month ago. Yeah. I mean, quick case in point are all of us, I'm sure, had 
many holiday plans back in December mm-hmm. 2021 and those sort of just got you know derailed in about Absolutely. two weeks time um, yeah how was that for both of you I I remember like just thinking because I was like it felt like we were like I was everyone was talking kept saying it was like March vibes again because you know like mm-hmm. the world opened up from like September to December yeah. to, like people were traveling like normal, Mm -hmm. everything was everything, even though there was COVID, it just kind of became like an afterthought per se, like no one was really thinking about it. Our school was open, every single event in school was like in person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then suddenly it was like, I remember telling people, I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to do this, this, like I'm so busy for Christmas break. And I think every single plan got canceled. Like I ended up staying in the lower mainland. I did not go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was kind of a blessing in disguise. I will not lie. I was also very happy to just like sit and do nothing <laughs> for four months because like September, like term one's draining, right? Because you go from summer until like school. Absolutely. Yeah. You, Amelia, you mentioned you just slept for six days. Yeah. Well, it was the first time I had nothing to do. Oh, right? no. <laughs> like it was... you, can, you can say, you can be like, I can't go out. I have COVID. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And I had no, no responsibilities for those. It's, you know, the last few days of December where like time doesn't feel real anyways in a non-COVID year. Mm-hmm. It was like, okay, I have no responsibilities for a few days. And my body was just like, okay, shut down. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I do feel better for it now, like that I, that I had that rest. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, for me, so my birthday is in late December. And (laughs) November, I was like, okay, I'm going to plan to go out, you know, to dinner with this set of friends. And then on my actual birthday, I'm going to go do this thing. Um, But I always had the caveat. I was like, and I always mentioned this too. I was like, you know, if things are still in a good spot, then this will run in December. But also anything can happen and it is what it is. And that was before we even knew about Omicron. Mm -hmm. Three weeks later boom things shut down I'm like well <laughs> I mean it is what it is that's kind of been my right my yeah. motto and so it, I don't know I'm always now I'm like I don't know if I can look forward to things anymore because I'm always like is this actually gonna happen or yeah. I yeah. have Hamilton tickets for May and I am terrified. <laughs> like stressed out. Checks the oh website like every day. Honestly, well, I had uh, the Queen Elizabeth. I was supposed to go to a show in January and then that got postponed. Mm-hmm. And so now I'm like, okay, Hamilton's far enough. Well, end of May is far enough away. Maybe it'll happen, but I am very nervous for that. Right. No, yeah, I know. Stressful. And so many of our, uh, like other members in the SAC and also like so many people just at UBC are, going to graduate in May and Mm -hmm. aren't sure if it's going to be in person, if it's going to be, if it's going to be a live stream on Zoom (laughs) where their name passes by like maybe 30 seconds after the four, five, six years that they've been here. Um, Anti-climb, very, you know, very anticlimactic. Um, So we just have to see. I I do like what you said about kind of like it is what it is. I feel like COVID's taught a lot everyone to kind of like live day by day. Yeah, I kind of it's like I feel like it's still like a blessing in disguise. You know what I mean? Like it's great to like look forward to things, but we've like I I personally have learned how just appreciate like every single day, like kind of like live in today instead of being stuck in like yesterday or tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, which has been really good because you're you kind of just appreciate. Like I remember when you like I don't think I ever appreciated sitting in classroom more than I did in September. Like when I stepped back into a classroom and I got to like sit down, I think I have like. I would have never appreciated it if COVID didn't happen. You know what I mean? Like we took so much of that for granted. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you went straight from high school into university, like that was the longest time I'd gone without sitting in a classroom since what, like kindergarten? You know, like it was just, it's always a staple. It's like, when it's not there, it's very strange. I just learned to appreciate it more. I was like, wow, like I can turn and talk to the person next to me. Yeah. There's a professor. There's like people are putting their hands up again. And it's such a tiny thing that you would never think about, right? You're like, oh, going to school, like sitting in a class, like, oh, it sucks. You're sleepy, you're mm-hmm. tired. And, but you, there's just like, I think Elliot, you had mentioned earlier, like the side, the tiny friendships you form, mm-hmm. it really does like impact your day a lot more than you realize. Oh yeah. And it was a very silly thing that I loved coming back was like in like a really big lecture, especially like a hundred or 200 person when the prof says something important or like they like change a slide and you hear like a hundred tiny little pens or a hundred tiny little fingers on keyboards. Like everyone (laughs) starts typing the same thing down. It's just like that sound. And it was very silly, but that was like one of the big things. I was like, I forgot 
about that sound that happened like <laughs> everyone's scratching down the same thing as fast as they can for yeah. whatever reason that really stuck out to me when I came back is like hearing it all <laughs> yeah well I mean I guess we can chat about some resources available to students here at UBC um mm -hmm. Vancouver specifically and so uh, one of them is you know a new program that they started at the wellness center this year um, for folks who don't know the wellness center is run by UBC it's located in the life building right next to the nest and this program is their IBPOC wellness mentors so they have a, a team of indigenous black and people of color um, upper year students who are paid staff and work as wellness mentors as a resource for other Indigenous, Black, and people of color at UBC. And um, you can book appointments with them, or you can go to their drop-in hours. They're open Monday to Thursday from 11 to 2. And you can chat about anything uh, health-related, well-being. You can talk about your lived experiences. You can talk about navigating certain dynamics at UBC. You can talk about your own lived experiences, dealing with microaggressions, so many things that are there, um, IBPOC specific for UBC students. Um, and that's a great resource right now that's available. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, th I think that's really good because coupled with COVID, we also dealt with a lot of like, um, like hate speech mm -hmm. and like violence against, I guess, people of color, indigenous and black mm -hmm. throughout, like, I think starting in March. So it must like, it's like, when everything like layers up, it gets difficult to handle, right? Like first you're dealing with the pandemic and then you're dealing with microaggressions in your daily life. And then you're dealing with like a lot of hate speech. And like, there's like, yeah. right now there's like the anti-Asian hate going around mm -hmm. everywhere. And so I think this yeah. is a really good resource. And I gotta say, I think that, you know, part of the COVID-19 pandemic is you've seen, we've seen people really rise up to the occasion and, and become helpful folks and, and really mm -hmm. support others. And then we also see the other side of things where some people have um, more retreated back and, and become, you know, not as great, I guess, community wise, people that have you know resorted to hate and, and violence. And it takes a lot, it takes a big toll on um, the mental health of, of those people who are affected, right? 100%, I agree. I think another really good resource is the health plan that's integrated into our fees because mm -hmm. I you have to like go out of your way to opt out of it so if you haven't you do have a health plan and coverage yeah. is available and it's up to 1500 for counseling um I've personally used it and I highly recommend um you can just do it it's very simple you do like direct billing to Pacific Blue Cross and you get covered up to 1500 dollars yeah and that's a recent increase that they did up from from the thousand that was it, already yeah. an increase yeah yeah. And it's, that money's just sitting there like for every student. Right. Really yeah. Wonderful. And, and I it's feel great like... to see that they're that like the student union is recognizing that need mm -hmm. and, and being dynamic in supporting us, which is great. I agree. The pandemic's taken a toll on everyone, mm -hmm. whether like, you know, we realize it or not, it, like in some shape or form has changed everyone a little bit. Yeah. Mm. And then also uh, throughout this time, the academic advisors, arts advising, science advising, eng advising, whatever you're in, um, are all really there, especially as Elliot talked about, if you're extending your degree, if mm -hmm. you're reconfiguring your plans based on, um, based on, you know, COVID classes being online, whatever works for you, they're really helpful in planning out your future years and making good decisions for the present and the future with COVID in mind. So yeah. those guys have also been really helpful in terms of mitigating you know, the, the academic stress that you might have mm -hmm. based on COVID. And for folks who don't know, right now they've extended our drop deadline. So you can't add a course mm -hmm. anymore, but if you want to drop a class without a W standing on your transcript, you can do that all the way up until 11.59 PM on Sunday, February 6th. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a nice, significant extension for, yeah. to help yeah, folks cope good. with um, these changing times right now. Mm -hmm. school stress yeah online university <laughs> yeah and you know for folks um who are looking for you know that one-on-one -on -one support um just to chat with a peer with someone who who gets it there is ams peer support and this is a, a group that i'm involved in, with actually 
Um, and part of the service that AMS Peer Support offers is free confidential one-on-one -on -one support sessions. Um, there are trained student volunteers there who will do support sessions with students virtually. And um, how it works is you book online. Um, I believe it's 45 minute sessions and you can just go there and talk about whatever is on your mind. That can be COVID-19 anxiety. That can be, I'm not sure how to deal with these financial hardships of COVID-19, or I'm not sure what I'm doing with my future. I'm not sure where I'm going to go with this degree. I am dealing with a lot of stress. My parents caught COVID and I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. There's so many things that you can chat about with them. Um, and we're actually going to quickly chat with the coordinator of AMS Peer Support, uh, Jeevan Sangha. Hi, Jeevan. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Um, I guess, you know, first off, do you just want to introduce yourself and sort of uh, what you do in your role at Peer Support? Sure. So my name is Jeevan Sangha. My pronouns are she, her. I am a fifth year sociology student and I'm also the coordinator of AMS peer support. Um, so essentially what my role is, is um, I work to oversee both branches of our service. Our service has a peer support branch where we run free confidential one-on-one -on -one peer support sessions and then an education and outreach side led by the wonderful Elliot, um, <laughs> where we do a lot of work in education and mental health and mental wellness and harm reduction and substance use on university campuses. So that can look like workshops, events, um, and social media posts and outreach. So my job is to oversee both of those branches and to kind of help guide both assistant coordinators in building whatever vision they have for their branch and dealing with a lot of administrative work and just generally overseeing the service and volunteer well-being. Great. So uh, today's episode has been talking about mental health during COVID-19, uh, online school, you know, uncertainty, and the challenges with living alone or having to self-isolate. And so we've been, you know, talking about some resources and one of them that came up was AMS Peer Support. Uh, we wanted to talk about what are some of the trends that I guess the peer support side has seen in their one-on-one -on -one sessions in terms of usage and, and topics being covered this year. Yeah, so in general, I would say that uptake for the service has definitely increased from last year. Um, with the pandemic and the shift to the pandemic, I feel like our service got really homogenized with a lot of other um, virtual mental health support services. But I feel like now in this kind of hybrid age of education, our service is seeming more like an option for students who wanna to talk to other students who understand what it's like to go through school and go through all the changes in the current climate um, and being a university student and having that experience specific to UBC because UBC has such a specific environment and such specific challenges to navigate. In terms of topics, I would say that overall we tend to have a pretty big mix, but from what I've observed in the last year, we've had an emphasis on loneliness and depression as a topic, mm -hmm. um, and also anxiety and academic stress. Those would be like the four main topics that come up. Of course, that academic stress topic tends to come up towards the middle of the term around midterms, yeah. but that uptick in anxiety and loneliness, I think, I mean, we're all feeling it right now, mm -hmm. um, especially as the pandemic kind of drags on. And we thought that our lives would be different at this point in time. And I think there's a level of grief um, that comes with that. So yeah, that's definitely what I've been seeing um, in terms of sessions this year. Definitely. And I think like, that's one of the main things we've talked about is expecting to be at a different place at this point in, and with us currently being in an online environment. Um, I'm also just curious uh, if a student wants to go through the process and like book a peer support session and then, you know, show up to the session. How does that work? And what does a session look like? Yeah, absolutely. So just in terms of safety, like we were just talking about COVID-19, we are remaining virtual for the rest of the year. That's for the safety of students and for our volunteers. Um, so if you want to book a session with AMS peer support, I would say the easiest way to do it is to Google AMS peer support and find our website through the AMS. 
on our service specific website. So it'll say AMS peer support right at the top. You can scroll down and there's a link to book a session through um, a platform called Calendly. And essentially what you'll find there is just um, a calendar with dates available to book sessions. You can click whichever date works best for you. It's available for same day. So you can book, I think the most recent you can book is 15 minutes in advance. So um, if you're sitting and you wanna to talk to someone in the moment, there's usually volunteers available on standby. And pick a time that works best for you. We'll just ask for some information. It's not um, information that's going to be disclosed any to anyone else um, unless it's in case of emergency. Um, and volunteers don't have access to that information, just us coordinators on the back end. So if we're worried about confidentiality or anything like that, that's just for coordinators to see. And then you can write in your name, your student number, your email, and um, the topic of your session. And once that is confirmed, you'll get a confirmation email with the time and a link to a secure platform called Doxy where you can have a session. And the reason we use Doxy is because it's encrypted and it's a lot more secure than Zoom is. So we know that session remains safe. It's used by a lot of healthcare professionals for telehealth appointments. And yeah, once you um, have your time booked, you can pop onto the link that you get in that confirmation email and a volunteer will be there to greet you and get you oriented to the start of a session. Um, that's basically all you need to know. Is there anything else I've missed or anything else you'd like to cover? I guess once you get to the session, um, is it sort of more open-ended and that the volunteer will, you know, be that listening ear and play off of you and how it goes? Yeah, that's a great question. So mm -hmm. I think what's really uh, cool about AMS peer support is that we're students. We are not counselors. Um, we're just students who are trained in peer support and trained in active listening. And the biggest thing for us is that we're not here to tell you what to do. We're not here to pass judgment on anything that you say. We're here to be a kind, empathetic listening ear and someone who can hopefully just create a safe space for you to say anything you need to say. And um, the way we open the session is just going over some ground rules about safety. And then we let the peer lead the session. So we ask them what brought them in. And we take the time to listen, to confirm how they're feeling, um, and kind of let the peer guide where they want the session to go and asking, prompting questions. How is that making you feel? Has there been a time where you felt like this before? And ultimately, if the peer is comfortable, we can provide pathways for the future. So whether that means coming up with a game plan for an argument you had with a friend or a family member, or that might mean some resources or some long-term support that we can provide. AMS peer support is a short-term service. We're not meant to be a long-term counseling service, but we are really knowledgeable in services on campus and off campus that can provide long-term support if that's something you're looking for. So really we aim to be that first point of contact that's super low barrier. Um, and we hope that we can provide a more robust support system when you leave. So yeah, definitely just being a listening ear and having that um, open, safe, kind, warm space for someone to come and share their emotions with us. And then also a pathway to future support. Perfect, thank you. Um, I think just before we head out, it, I'll just mention AMS peer support is uh, not a crisis service, but um, it, as Jeevan said, it's a, peer support service here for students supporting students. Um, and I think that's really an important piece to know. Absolutely. Uh, and you can find us at ams.ubc.ca slash student dash services slash peer dash support. Um, our hours are listed there. We're open Monday to Friday. Um, hours vary between each day, but um, volunteers will always be available during those times. Great. Anything uh, lastly that you'd like to share, Jeevan? No, I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. This has been great. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Have a good day. You too. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you um, to Jeevan for that lovely little chat. Uh, it looks like that's all the time we have today. Sarv or Amelia, do you want to just say a little piece before we wrap up? Yeah, I think one of the things is um, I would highly recommend just reaching out to the resources that were mentioned and to know that honestly, you're not alone. <laughs> like there's three of us here and we've spent like a little bit chatting about it and we've all experienced changes in some way. So I don't think there's any shame. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. I echo everything you've said. It's uh, it's very nice, even informally to talk to people, uh, mm -hmm. but sometimes you do need that formal uh, yeah. support contact. So a mix of both, just 
be healthy, be safe, and be good to yourself. Awesome. Thank you both. Um, well, thank you folks for joining us today. Um, you can be sure to follow us for more content on Instagram at UVCSAC. All right. Have a good day. Bye.